Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and today I'm going to help you understand terminology of your machine. So when you're watching videos or reading things to, to learn about your CNC machine, in this case it's a CNC router, what are the different terms that they're using and what do they mean? So in this video we're going to talk about the machine itself and the various components of the machine. So when you hear people talking, you know what they're talking about. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the machine itself, the actual workspace and the moving components. Uh, obviously the whole thing is considered a CNC machine. So the terms of this machine, obviously this is considered the work bed. And you have a workspace. So in this case, there is a 24 by 24 board here. And you can see that the uh, bed of the machine is much larger than the board. This 24 by 24 is the actual space that this machine can do work in. Anything outside of it cannot do work. The, what the uh, tool paths, you cannot perform a tool path outside of here. And by tool path, what I mean is the cutting bit in the router cannot cut outside of this workspace. So that's your working space of the machine. Anything else is excess, you know, you can use it for clamping, what have you. Now, you have your main body of the machine that your components move along. And in that case, it's typically the x-axis. And then you have what's called a gantry. The gantry is the bridge that goes across the machine. And that's always uh, moving with this. And then you have the carriage. This whole element is called the carriage. So where the actual machine that's doing the work, in this case the router, that's considered the head, the part that moves up and down with the motor. Now you have a drive system. And in this particular unit, this is called a Bob's CNC Evolution 4 router. The drive system on this is belt driven. It has notched belts that, that move every component on the machine with the exception of the z-axis will come close which has what they call a lead screw now there's several different drives that you can find there too they can be belt driven but belt on a z-axis is not very good you want a screw feed and so this is like a special uh, like a buttress thread it, as you know most threads have points on them this doesn't it has flat points this may actually be an acme type of thread uh, i won't explain what that means however the best you can get is a lead screw a ball screw i'm sorry not a lead screw a ball screw very precise but they're very expensive and you won't find it on home built machines that often but you can find them okay so that's that part um, then you have the controller when you hear controller we're talking about the brains that are actually running the machine. So in Bob's CNC, there's this you know, little uh, electronic uh, board here that tells the machine everything to do. So it's pretty fascinating when you look at electronics and you have some device this small that's doing all kinds of work on this machine. This controller is telling the servo motors how to move, when to move, how much to move. And by servo motor, it's all the drive motors that are moving the machine. So this one is moving the uh, head up and down. Uh, in this case, it's stepper motors. Stepper motors are servo motors modified. We'll just say that. And then you have the uh, operating system, which in this case is separate from the machine look at my computer let's launch this universal g-code sender g-code is something that you're going to hear a lot of not only will you hear a lot about g-code you'll hear about m-code as well now those are things that actually tell the machine what to do and there's stuff in that that you have to know as well some basics so i'm going to do a completely separate video on that There'll be a flag up here that'll pop out if I've got it set up and a link down in the description to that video so you understand that. Anyway, let's move on. So this is a universal G-code sender. This is actually communicating with the controller. 
and you can see on this you have this display here that tells your X, Y, and Z positions. So X, Y, and Z, X is motion that's moving toward the operator. Anytime you reference motion on the machine, you stand in front of the machine and reference it from there. So X is the back and forth movement that way. And then you have Y, which is left and right motion. So let's just get in the right orientation so you understand this. I'm in the front of the machine. X is back and forth. Y is side to side. And Z is up and down. So you're always going to have that kind of display. And this universal G-code sender is actually, like I said, telling the controller how, uh, how much it needs to move different components on the machine. And then the controller is actually doing the uh, telling the motors how to move. A couple other things to know about your machine. Every machine has a home position and you're going to hear this term a lot. Home position is where the machine knows where it's going to start from. In this case in Bob's E4 CNC it's the uh, back corner at the left. Most machines are going to be like that. The machine when you turn it on always has to be sent home. When you send it home, it's going to go find that home position and then it's going to do all its work relative to that. It, the machine has to know some reference point to work from. For home position, basically here's what happens. I'm going to tell the machine to go home or I'm going to send it home. So I hit the button and what the machine is now doing is it's finding its start point. It's moving all its axes to limit switches that it interprets and does everything from from that point. So the machine is now home or in the home position. That's how that works. This universal G-code center is also the place where you are going to command moves. So let's just take an example so you understand what I'm talking about. I'm going to enter a move into this machine and let's just go with we'll go down here to the command area and we're going to say G0 which stands for rapid G20 which means I'm telling the machine to move in inches and I'm going to go to X0 Y0 that is a different location from machine home if you look at this readout here it says right now X is minus 12.75 but the little numbers are zero so the little numbers are the home position and the bigger numbers are the reference position that I work from so when I hit enter the machine is gonna move itself to what I've referenced as X0 Y0 and here we go so it did that in a rapid move and now if you look at the display, the numbers have reversed, and now I'm at zero, zero. My Z is still in a different position. I'm not gonna mess with that right now. Another thing you're gonna learn about your machine is you have another position called a zero position. Now the zero position is the reference point where you are gonna start your work from. So let's just say this point is where, let's just put a block of wood on here. Let me see what I can find here. So I have a piece of wood I am going to do some work on. Let's just say we're going to engrave on this wood some kind of name. So I need a, a, a reference position on this so I know where to set it up or I can tell the machine where it's going to start from. So I'm going to clamp my board down right here and then I'm going to have some zero position to start from. We'll just say the back left corner as well. So when I bring my machine up and I tell it this is the zero, zero point, when you hear zero, zero, that means that that's your reference point. And the machine is going to reference that point to start doing all its inscription from the home position to the zero position. You are referencing from the zero position. That corner is considered zero, zero. Actually, it's going to be zero, zero, zero. The top surface would be the top 
corner would be your zero reference and your x zero, y zero, z zero. And there's one more term that you have to know. Comment. When you comment on YouTube videos, that is the number one thing that YouTube uses to uh, measure the quality of a video and they will rank videos higher and higher with the more engagement that it has. And I really want to grow my channel to help other people like you get to know what you're doing uh, and become better and uh, experienced and, and just teach you. Teach you what I know. I've been a machinist most of my life before I became an engineer. So please comment. Give me a like or a dislike, either one works. And down below there's a link, a PayPal link, if you care to donate to IDC Woodcraft so I can do a lot more of these videos for people, I certainly would appreciate it. This has become my livelihood. I'm one of those guys that said, I am done with the nine to five and I'm gonna go into some other venture and this is what it's turned out to be. And uh, so yeah. My livelihood is not taking off yet in this new thing, so I'm still working at it. But I am more than happy to share my knowledge. Now, uh, that's about it. Enjoy the newfounded craft that you are getting into, and I wish you abundance and joy and uh, all the pleasure and passion that you find in your creativity and that you can uh, develop it in whatever way you want to, either in a business or just as a hobby. That's about it. I will talk to you next time. Don't forget to comment. See ya.